My main point of all this is it's trainable, right? By the way, V stands for volume, O2 is oxygen symbol, right? Max is the amount you can handle. So VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen you can consume. And it's trainable. Let's go on to slide two here. Okay. Peak rate of oxygen consumption is greatly influenced by the heart's capacity to pump blood. Plain and simple. It's uh, really central to VO2 max, literally and figuratively, okay? We call the maximum amount of blood that can be pumped from the blood, or from the heart, as stroke volume. So if you read articles, what is stroke volume? That's per beat, how much fluid are you uh, pumping out, okay? The formula for VO2 max, if you ever wanna know it, is the maximum stroke volume multiplied by the maximum heart rate, times the difference in the oxygen content of the arteries and veins. Okay, maximum heart rate is lower, and this is really important for older people, than it is for younger people. Consequently, younger people tend to have much higher VO2 max. As an example, when I was in college, I had a heart rate max of 200 to 205, depending upon how fresh I was. If I was glycogen depleted, meaning I didn't have enough carbs, I might be in the mid 190s. I'm 50 years old. I have yet to get it above 170 in the last year at full effort, can't do it. 168 is usually where I top out. If I'm glycogen depleted, it might be 163 or four. If it's in the morning, it might be 163 or four. Remember, heart rate is influenced by, is diurnal. It's influenced by the time of day. It's lower in the morning and higher in the afternoon. Reaches its peak probably around 5 p.m., okay? So if you are in love with using heart rate percentages, remember, time of day greatly influences how high you can get your max heart rate. Therefore, all your heart rates that are percentages below that should be restructured, reconfigured, okay? When you're low in carbohydrates, your maximum heart rate will be less, and consequently, all your training heart rates should be lower, okay? Keep this in mind, heart rate is up medium at best way of measuring stress, at best. I can go through a long list of reasons why I think it's awful. Okay, main point of all this is, it's important to increase the ability of your heart to pump blood. And then the question becomes, well, how do we do that? We'll get to that in just a moment. Just remember, arterial venous oxygen difference that you read in the literature is reflected in the differential, okay? What's the most important information runners or coaches need to know about VO2 max? You can only hold it about four to eight minutes. That's it. None of this 15 minute stuff, not, it's not 5K pace. Get that out of your head, that's wrong. Okay? And don't, don't say it's based on distance. It's not based on distance, it's time, duration, all right? I'm going to talk about several studies here and what they found out. And I have at least 30, uh, 30 plus studies that, uh, on my computer that show all the different uh, durations. And they almost all fall within this. Okay? If you run at 2K pace to 10K pace, you're probably going to improve your VO2 max to some degree. Okay? So all of them are options for you. The highest measured oxygen consumption is less important, in my opinion, than the actual speed at which it's achieved. I have had people say, well, I can have a VO2 max of 80, and how come I can't run 1330 for 5K, because V dot says I should be able to. I'm like, well, maybe you have really poor economy. You're not very efficient, and your threshold's awful, okay? What really counts is the speed at which you achieve your VO2 max, and we can use that to set up our training paces, okay? On a treadmill, research shows that you can sustain VO2 max for roughly six minutes. How is VO2 max duration determined? That's a great question you ask yourself, Tom. If you put somebody on the treadmill in a lab, and they run faster and faster and faster each minute or each two minutes, or maybe in the old days it was three minutes, but typically now it's one or two minutes. 
you'll reach a point where you can't, can't consume any more oxygen. You've reached your top speed where you consumed oxygen. That speed is noted and forms and it's retained for later use. And then you come back to the lab when you're fresher, maybe five days later or a week later, and we, after a warm up, put you at that speed that you achieved at the highest end of that previous test. And see how many minutes you can, seconds you can sustain it. That's how it's done, okay? So if I put Joe on the treadmill and he gets faster and faster and faster and he's consuming more and more and more oxygen and he reaches five minutes a mile and at that point can no longer consume any more oxygen, I bring him back a week later, put him on the treadmill, have him warm up and then we'll put five minutes a mile pace or 12 miles per hour and see how long he can hold it. And it's usually around six minutes. Okay? However, on the track, it's about a minute longer. There's a skill to running on the treadmill. In fact, I read a research study recently that showed elite runners are awful at running on the treadmill. Their efficiency is awful. It's, it turns out it has a lot to do with the fact that it's a neuromuscular coordination issue because running on the treadmill is different than running on land. Running on the treadmill has a, a, a belt that's moving below you. You actually don't push into the, into the treadmill at the same type of force you do on the ground. You actually have to be accustomed to pulling back in a smooth fashion because it's moving under you. Okay? On the track, people can sustain VO2 max typically closer to seven minutes. Okay? And you're a 5K runner who recently ran 20 minutes. Okay? That's 626 a mile, by the way. Your VO2 max, you punch it in the calculator, is 90.67 seconds per lap. Design the workout. After a warm up, run repeat uh, 400s. How many should you do? Well, if you want to run a workout that's equivalent to a 5K race stressor, that's exactly it. I have a training load uh, score calculator, uses calculus again. And if you, this person runs 10 400s in one minute 30.7 seconds and jogs 43 and a half seconds at 50% of VO2 max, which is 1035 a mile, that's exactly 100 points of stress, which is exactly equivalent to her 20 flat 5K stress. So basically this is a hard workout, right? That simulates exactly the stress that she would achieve in a 5K race. Okay, would you, would, would you do this workout on a Thursday when you're gonna race Saturday? No, that wouldn't be sensible. You might do it early in the week on a Tuesday, no later than Wednesday, because you're gonna need at least three nights sleep before you're sufficiently recovered to perform well again. Anytime it's 100 stress points from a 5K race or a workout, you need three nights sleep before you can run pretty well again. Okay, this person is an 18 flat.